Hi, welcome back. We are on the um, Wood Green Invitational. It's round four, and we just um, we've just covered the first half of the round, had a quick break, and we are now continuing where we left off, uh, which is uh, Tamas Fodor against Ravi Haria. And uh, we were sort of about here. I'm just going to play the moves until we get to live. Yeah, so Ravi basically played what we were expecting, just uh, hitting with f6 and g5 against the uh, the center. Uh, rook h6, yeah, this is a very pleasant position for, um, for uh, ooh, rook f2 now. For black. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Now knight f6 is looking quite... Quite starting to get quite interesting for um, for uh, for black. Yeah. Okay. So if uh, Ravi goes knight f six, that's going to look to come into either g four check at the moment with a fork, or into that square on e four. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you know, you're sort of getting out of the uh, attack of a bishop there. So you know, those those two pieces, knight and a four, bishop b five, are a little bit. A little bit useless, really. I mean, the only thing you've got to watch out for is is that you don't allow a knight takes b6 tactic or a, or a knight c5 tactic, which is kind of in the air. Um, a, a, b, and then rook a1. Yeah. But at the moment, you'd have knight g4 check. So, you know, I mean, that would be uh, that would be fine. Um, but I think if black plays king d6 afterwards, then, uh, yeah. Oh, rook g8 has been played. Yeah, I mean, uh, there are plenty of good moves here. Although... I did like knight f6 though. And knight f6 felt like a nice move, must be said. Mm. Um, but okay, yeah. I mean, rook j8 is. Uh, I mean, I think knight f6 is coming in, but maybe maybe uh, Ravi thought that uh, after knight f6, there, there might be rook g2 or rook g1. You know, just uh, okay. he just yeah. wants to avoid it really. And um, yep. um, yeah, and that knight that's still that has not come into play at all. I mean, uh, we're going to have to do, but it's getting very difficult now because b3. We've got rook h3 check now, you know, which is uh, a very unpleasant. I mean, you're cutting across the third rank. So, yeah. Uh, this to let this knight come out. Yeah. We, we, we go rook h3, king d2, knight f6. You know, I mean. Uh, um, and then yes, another fork is threatened this time on e4. Yeah. You know, and um, and Ravi's a good. He's a good. He, he plays these sort of positions well. I mean, he beats uh, Zvagintsev, uh, Russian yeah. grandmaster. From 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 this sort of um, hey Wilson yeah from this you know, it, it was it was it was a, a quiet position that he outplayed him from you know and uh, and you know he played quite beautifully against Ragintsev who's uh, you know, I mean he's a really big talent isn't he Ravi yeah. yeah yeah absolutely you know it's uh, looking strong and work you know working hard I think as well so you know those two things together just they just always seem to uh, you know produce great results so. Um, no, so this is this is very difficult. It's really a very difficult position for White. So um, I think Tamas will be. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, he, Tamas. You know, didn't go. You know, refused the draw by repetition uh, and uh, and went for it. You know, which is you know again only credit uh, to him for that. Mm. But, uh, obviously, you know, uh, it's a moment yeah. like this that you start thinking, oh my goodness, you know. No, of course, of course, White doesn't. Of course, White doesn't have to play B three. We're just giving that as an example. If for White to try and um, activate this knight again, yeah, because I mean, it's really, yeah, yeah. What can you say? I mean, if it, if it doesn't get active soon, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, you know, really painful. And I mean, you know, Rook H three check is uh, is possible. Yeah, Knight F six is coming in. I mean, this is really a clear advantage for Black. I mean. Uh, no. Would White consider just taking the knight because it's such so problematic? Well, I was thinking about that earlier, to be honest. I was thinking about quickly taking the knight and playing b3, knight b2 to d3. You know, I mean, that was really... So takes, takes, and just b3 here. Yeah, but, uh, but I mean, that was many moves ago I was thinking about. Hmm. That. Now we're... Well, maybe it's still, maybe it's still, still okay. Um, I mean, we can go rook h3 check. Um king d2 and we can start thinking about playing d4 now this sort of stuff <coughs> d4 and if c takes well, that, d4, that helps our bishop, but it does let the knight out so yeah take... we go rook b3 now and uh we've got four isolated pawns to target you know mm. so uh yeah again i don't know i mean it's, maybe it's possible but uh, i mean it's not 
it's not not pleasant put it that way because i mean if knight c3 i think uh oh, no, that's not quite clear knight c3 we can uh yeah, because I mean, I the a pawn's now on priest yeah the a pawn's now on priest um but I, I could go you know i could even go rugby rugby four takes would be four or oh, i just go a6 i mean i'm just go, you know let's not be silly i just go a6 yeah a6 uh, makes sense. and again you've just got loads of weaknesses to defend you know um if anyone's having fun here it's white it's black you know i mean that's the point so um uh yeah i don't know i mean i think you know with white you've got to do something i think because i think staying with a knight and a4 for in perpetuity then um you know it's not gonna it's not gonna work but um, um, but yeah, it's one of those positions where anything that you do do uh, just always ends up looking like you're making your position worse somehow, you know. Just uh, but uh, yeah, a very unpleasant position for White anyway at the moment. Yeah, so should we think... let's maybe have a look at another game, I suppose. Just uh... this one's this one has been agreed to. Let's see. Let's oh, see. We played our line. We played our line. Yeah. So takes, 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 takes. We did look at all of this. Oh, and we even looked at this. Takes. Yeah, and then rookie eight. I said it just at the end. Rookie eight was maybe uh, better than bishop b seven because you. That's when you yeah. managed to get your bishop to f six. I got an attack going, didn't I? Yeah, that's right. Seven. And then just yeah. queen, queen b four swapped off the queens. Ah. Fine. Yeah, and then this was a draw. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Matt Turner against Jonah Willow. Ah, he played. Did he play? No, he didn't. Yeah, probably. So um, we were looking at a couple of possibilities here for Black. We were looking at Rook B8 and Bishop D7. He's gone actually Knight A5 here. Mm. Oh, this is Jonah as playing Black. Yeah. Okay, Queen A4. B6, ninety-five. Yeah. F6. Oh, this has got quite sharp. Knight takes D5. Um, and now E takes D5. And we've got this uh, this the old uh, queen on E7 attacking bishop on E2 um, uh, stuff. Yeah, so Matt came up with an interesting move here. He played um, B4. Hitting the knight, and the knight doesn't have, I suppose, well, it doesn't really have any squares because the knight's defending c6. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you've got, um, you, you could try knight b7. Um, White will probably play knight c6 and then queen takes c2. That is possible, but that looks, it, it looks almost. How suicidal. is that? Because that looks, my initial instinct is that would be good for White, but let's see. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Black's got a, a lot safer alternative. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, no, Queen E2, yeah, yeah, sorry. Queen E2. So, I mean, the so, question is whether you, whether you, you might well throw it in. Yeah, absolutely, rook straight away, right? You could just go rookie one. Yeah, you'll go rookie one. So, we'll go Queen D2, probably, just to hang on to uh, to the rooks. Um, yeah. But then I'll go Knight D8. Knight D8 and Queen E8. Probably. We can get both our rooks on seventh, but we might get back rank mate. We're not back rank mated, are we? Can we do this? Just put both our rooks on. No, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. Rook c7. Um, probably king h6, I guess. You probably have to. Yeah. Rook, rook e7 or something. Yeah, but this might be dangerous, mightn't it, leaving our back rank like this? Well, we've got bishop d7. We've got, we've got bishop d7 in this in this position. Just if you want to be, mm. want to be No, but we can go, um, we can go, go queen, queen b3. b3. Yeah, yeah. And that's threatening mate. Uh, how? Uh, I'm imagining it's threatening me. Uh, I, I was thinking, oh no! <laughs> you are you are actually threatening, uh, threatening you know? myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, the, the problem is you're king. Otherwise, you could threaten rook takes h7, king h7, and queen h3 check. That would be absolutely beautiful. But uh, but then you rook takes h7, king takes rook takes d7 check. Yeah, well, queen h3 check. I was thinking just to uh, to get the queen in, but your your back rank's too weak. You're you're, you're not. Uh, going yeah. To... But nonetheless, isn't this still good for white? Uh, I go knight c6 maybe. Or 
Is that not mm. that's not completely clear? I mean, knight c6, you could go rook c6, but then I take with a bishop. You go queen h3, I go king g5. Are you mating me? I'm not 100% sure you're mating me, although it's probably not a good idea to do this. Um, maybe go rook c8 simply. That's maybe the simplest. Rook c8. Watching the clash oh, no, no. the, and then this popped up. Well... <laughs> Hello, guitar man. There is obviously no choice when this pops up. Whatever you're watching has to be put aside. Good to see you, guitar man. I think we have to sack on H7 now. It's our only choice. So we might have just given away a piece here. All right. We'd have to do this, wouldn't we? Because otherwise we are getting mated. Uh, no, no. I mean, you could take the rook on C8 and then go H3. You probably, I mean, it's hmm. not so bad. Um, this is pretty good, isn't it? Or not? Uh, Where are you going to go? I'll probably go knight f7, I think. The Strummer Jones of English <laughs> chess. <laughs> knight f7. Knight f7. Hmm. I don't want white to get mated, but. That might be happening. Yeah, I, I don't think this is good. I think this has gone a bit too far. Mm. I mean, it is very dangerous. I mean, knight b7, yeah. If you're getting away with it, I'd be I'd be astounded, to put it that way. B4, yeah. So this is what he has. He has actually played it. Yeah. So I would think that, you know, if I was black, then my, my first instinct would be just to take on e5. Yeah. And then after B takes A5, I go B5. B5. And then I, I don't know. I mean, you go Queen somewhere. Uh, not quite sure which. B3. B3, let's say. And then I guess E4. Yeah. Question is, how bad is this? Um, it's a little bit uncomfortable. Definitely, but um, um, but I think the black's still in the game. Yeah, I mean, I don't quite see how to do this. Well, I suppose we come well, in on... Yeah, we just double up, I think. Rook, rook C5 or Rook C6, maybe. Um, and then Rook C1 after. So I guess go Bishop B6, maybe. And then I go... Um, uh, Rook C1. Rook C1. I'm slightly better. I mean, you know, just uh, there's plenty of weak dark squares there. I think it's a little bit. But I can go, you know, I can play moves like Queen F6, for example, and, uh, or you know, get myself organized, go Queen F6, and your D4 squares weak. But, I mean, I'd rather be white in this position, I think, you know, because uh, um, I think white's definitely got an, an initiative and the, the dark squares are a bit uh, airy. Mm. It's not. Uh, it's not finished by any means, you know. Um, I mean, other ones... yeah. No, I mean, there's, uh, there's. Uh, uh, I mean, maybe we can go. Um, maybe we can go. Maybe we can go rook a c eight here. Yeah, I was going to try. I don't know if this works. I was going to try and go bishop there. Wow. For this pin. But it might not work because you could actually just go bishop takes g4, couldn't you? That is actually true. Yeah. We're going to back rank mate. So yeah. um, I, I mean, won't yeah. attempt that. I mean, it, it's. Uh, I I remove back rank mate threats, surely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm threatening queen d4, of course. So, um, you know, I've got some ideas. I think you know. I, th I think white is just better. White is better, but it's just it's not so clear. Yeah. You know, it's not so. Um... Right. So after b four, black played uh, f takes e five. So it did. We did go down this line. Takes the knight. So white's going to take this knight, I assume. Um, and then b five. We were looking at before. Yeah, I think so. Here and here. My latest theory is white should just stop back rank mate threats with like h3 or something yeah sounds good um 
and then come in on the C file. Yeah, should be a pleasant edge for white, good position. All right, let's see the next one. Okay, Andrew Greet and Jonathan Blackburn. So we were looking at uh, Queen D2. We'd done a whole lot of analysis on that. Oh my goodness, what's happening here? Andrew Greet is still thinking about the reply. He's been thinking 42 Indeed. minutes. He's, he's thought throughout our lunch break and uh, he's still thinking now, but it is complicated, isn't it? It's extremely complicated and um, yeah, um, not easy to find um, um, uh, a big advantage for uh, for white, you know, and um, I mean, I think when he sacrificed the exchange, he, he assumed that he was probably winning, you know, uh, quite clearly. And I think this this move obviously has, uh, has shocked him a little bit. Mm. I mean, we found um, we found a line that uh, that led to, um, yeah, two pawns for the exchange, basically, you know, yeah. which, uh, which I think, you know, is a slight edge for white. Um, you know, definitely more pleasant for white to play, but not in principle, you know, probably black should uh, could consider that he would uh, hold that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not quite sure what else you can do, really. Fine. Well, let's move on because he's still yeah. thinking. He can carry yeah. on thinking. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe Queen C3 or something is some subtle idea. You know, you, you, it's possible. But I'm not. I'm not. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I'm not quite even sure what I'm. What I'm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm guessing. So you're trying for... Okay, let's. And now this one we left uh, Marcus Harvey in quite a difficult situation. That was our analysis. Um, so we were at this position, and um, no, we were before there, weren't we? No, no. D takes C five. D takes C five. Didn't we have a knight in there still? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, black played knight takes C five. Knight, 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 so knight, 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 knight takes C five. Pawn takes. King a7. King a7. Um, I think this was d7. Now, this is quite interesting. Mark took on d7. I was thinking about just going... Bishop b6. Rook, uh, Bishop, can Bishop b6 just win? Uh, there's King a8, I think. Quite, it's an incredibly cunning idea from uh, from uh, from Marcus. So if Bishop B six, the idea is to go King A eight, and Rook C eight allows Rook B eight. Yeah, so Rook C eight, Rook B eight, and White hasn't made progress there. No, actually, he's got to watch out for his, his, for his rook a little <laughs> got to bit. Watch out at that point. So. So what, what, what I was what I was thinking about, yeah, I mean, the, the line I was thinking about was was to go into the bishop b six to go rook c eight. Uh, so here, go rook c eight straight away here. Yeah, but I, I guess yeah, the the idea being that, but I guess that he can just go rook b eight then. All the same. Well, then we can go here. Yeah, then we but then we take off. Yeah, then we take off. Take. Take. Yeah. And then we go and uh, yeah, mm. rook b seven. A uh, rook b seven. Now we go rook c eight. Now we go rook c eight. Hmm, that doesn't quite work. Cause rook b eight. I was thinking bishop b six check. Yeah. But then he goes king a eight, and he's still hanging on. There isn't any mate for this bishop b6 check. It looks nice, but it's nothing, right? No, this this so that's quite interesting. I mean, it's a great defense. I mean, I, I was I was really mm. thinking, uh, wow, is there anything in uh, left? So what did Mark do? He played um Well he took on d7. Takes. Mm -hmm. And he's played b4, which I guess is double-edged because it does it strengthens the um c5 pawn but it does mean the bishop has to make sure it can get out i suppose it always can because it can go via c7 and out to e5 interesting, or interesting. b4 is b4 necessary i wonder hmm. interesting okay so so marcus went king b7 yeah 
Hebs. Rook B6 check and King A7. So this could repeat. Well, no, no. I, I think Mark's idea would be to go C6 normally. Yeah. Okay. So C6. And we go Rook C7. And we've got a choice. We can take on A6 or we can take on B5. It doesn't really matter. Well, A6, let's go A6. So that was better, of course. Rook A6. King A6. Bishop and then Bishop C7. Seven. And then Bishop takes B4. It's why I'm wondering about this move B4, whether it was necessary. Because Black's got Bishop B4 now. Yeah. But the question is, how 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 good is this? I mean, it's a, it's not an easy uh, ending for um, for Black, possibly. So let's but... say you go um, Bishop B5. Mm, I'll just go F6, I think. Next. I'm wondering how, I mean, how is this, I mean, it's quite hard to get, quite hard to get into Black's position here, really, so, um, but, this, but, this, but Black has a big, has big difficulties getting, getting to the sea pawn. It's quite an unusual ending, I don't, I don't know, but I would assume that Black, I'd assume that Black would be fine somehow. I assume <clears> Black. <throat> fine. But maybe, 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 just after, just, can we just go back to the position King A7? Yeah. Um, so if I if I went c6, uh, rook c7, and then I went a3, for example. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's better. But then I suppose I go bishop d6, or even bishop d8. Bishop d8. Oh, it's a little bit, maybe a little bit risky. Oh, I don't know. Bishop d8 could be. Yeah. Well, it's got the rook a bit stuck, hasn't he? That rook is a bit stuck, really. Um, so maybe not c6. Maybe um, mm. it's checking a7. It's an incredible defense from Black, by the way. Really, uh, yeah. really amazing. Yeah, I thought might just might might just repeat here. But well, I guess it's not what he's after. No, no, not from this position. You'd. Uh... So you, do you think this is still very good for White? I think White's got all the chances here, but I just, um, but it's mm. just, you've played, you know, you've played these moves, Bishop A5 and B4. So your your bishops really, you know, you've taken, you've basically taken some, it's quite a big, quite a big uh, commitment really, you know, so um, uh, it, it needs to, now it needs to sort of work basically, you know, and because uh, otherwise you might end up uh, just getting those pieces, get, getting hit with Bishop D8 or something like that. So... I'm a little bit, little bit unsure about how to proceed here. Um, I think you should go back to c6. Yeah, but then king b7, and we've just got a draw. That's what I think it is. <laughs> yeah, it would be a shame, really, because I think that there's somewhere, some, somewhere buried in there, there was, there was definitely yeah. a, a very good continuation for white. Mm. But indeed, it's not easy to see how um, how to proceed here. Um, not easy at all. I mean, this move c6, rook b, rook a6. But I don't think that I don't really. That bishop ending is quite is quite tough, really. But I don't. I don't know. I don't know whether it's uh, whether it would be enough for uh, for white. I mean, it should it should just be you know you could just try it. I mean, it's not uh, uh, you would have thought that you're um, you're you're not in any danger of losing uh, like that. But um, so if Hebs goes c six, rook c seven, but this is just a draw, right? Well, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I think it's equal. But uh, I mean, that's that's not to say that it's not you know yeah. easier for white to play than black. Um, I mean, you, you could also just. Uh, the problem is bishop takes b4 is a threat here. That is the big problem at the moment. Um, so I've got to be a little bit because what, what I would what I would really want to do is to to play, you know, king b2 to b3 and then play a4. You know, that would be the real uh, that would be the real dream. Um, You'd have to go a3 first if you want to try that. I think. Yeah, okay. So let's let's go a3. Let's just try a3. Um Oh god. 
Uh, so he's done. He's done. What? He's done, it. he's done it. He's done it. He's done it. He's done it. Yeah, yeah. King a six, bishop c seven, bishop b four. Yeah. Before it's on the board, actually. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we were looking at just now. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I don't think it's uh, it's it's a bit tough for the white king to um uh, to get into the uh, black position, but it's very yeah. difficult for the black king to get at the white pawn on the c6 so well yeah because how would you do it black would have to move the bishop then go b4 and then king b5 yeah but if uh, put with his yeah uh, but if the bishop goes to d8 for example then uh king b5 will lose to c7 so it's it's quite tricky So, bishop D, so is bishop d8 actually a threat well not really because c7 can be met by king b7 but king c2 is a uh, mark's play that's a good move okay so king c2 hmm I mean, bishop c5, <clears throat> and then bishop b6 is the sort of the obvious way to try and get at the, um, to try and get at this bishop. Yeah, he's a strong player, Marcus. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he is. I got he, to this position, I was playing in some kind of Southampton thing, and I was like two or three pawns up against him um must have been a few years ago of course um and then he, yeah and over then he just like I, he didn't even I, I didn't even blunder or anything he just kind of smoothly outplayed so bishop c5 has been played so king d3 is most natural and then we'll go bishop b6 i kind of don't think Heb should have gone into this but maybe maybe yeah bishop okay bishop yeah, i mean why well, well, definitely better here i mean it's not it's not yeah. it's really you know it's worth <coughs> it's worth doing we go bishop d6 now bishop d6, d6 yeah and threatening yeah. bishop f8 okay yeah 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 i mean you know if you even if you uh swap off the g pawn for the c pawn uh we've got a, a past h pawn which is quite hard to stop so um all right so black should try and avoid that and you'd Avoid it with g5? Could do. Could play g5. Don't know if it avoids it, though. Well, so that... yeah, we'll go bishop f8, bishop e7, you know, and just pick it up, really. So, cost you more time. And, you know, cost you more time. That's definitely true. So, might be an idea. Um... Oh, because you could go here. The yeah, old bishop c7. Oh, you could go. Oh, yeah, it doesn't work. You could go bishop c7. Bishop c7. And the bishop g5. Then um, five and uh, then b6. b6, and you've taken the pawn. Yeah, but I mean, we can go bishop f6 then, for example. Now. Yeah. And then king c6. Then I go g4. Okay. And, uh, okay yeah and, and sort of you know uh well it's going to be a struggle to stop that pawn I, I you know maybe it's possible uh you know and, and i think there's many better ways of doing this but you know th this is kind of something that, that's definitely yeah. i mean or maybe f4 first to stop e5 you know and then afterwards go g4 and h4 could be quite tricky you know okay so actually the c pawn's not the key pawn it's the h pawn well, if, if, I think you know if you could swap swap uh, those, it wouldn't be such a bad deal. You know, you just distract because mm -hmm. you can't push the c pawn through, but you can use it to distract the opponent, like in the king and pawn ending. You know. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Something like this feels like it. Um, it could be decent. You know. All right. Good. So we're up to here on the board. Indeed. Let's see. Uh, let's see the next one. Uh, so. Fodor against Harriet. Now we left this in a promising position for Black. We were thinking, 
um, and uh, we just had a little more king e2 and then the knight did come around to f6 oh okay but uh do we have knight takes b6 now Ooh, let's this, see this was a trick you had to you had to watch out for <laughs> knight, I mean, knight e5 might be another idea but let's say knight takes b6 there so pawn takes Rook okay so So yeah, I mean the, the, the problem there is that uh, yeah, but maybe maybe Ravi's just thinking I'm I'm just going to go knight e4 actually. Knight e4. Oh, and come around to d6 to defend. <laughs> ah yes, this story of uh, yeah Barry Heimer at the start. Yes, indeed. <laughs> What's that story? No, it's it's in the Peter Wells's book. So uh, his co uh. how he uh, how he got back into chess. Um, yeah, this is actually quite nasty, isn't it? Rook b7, king f6. Uh, um, I mean, uh, you're going rook h2. And yeah, if, even if I take on f2, I'll be taking on h2 next. So, I mean, that might be the you're best way to do it. Or black. <laughs> you keep changing sides. Sorry? <laughs> you keep changing sides on. <laughs> I, I'm not for anyone. I'm just. <laughs> Just, uh, so rook takes b6. Um, we go knight f2. We go king f2. Um, ooh, yes, yes, that'll have to be done. Uh, and then we start. We then we run king e3 maybe. And then what? Take another. Could do. Just keep taking stuff. Got bishop, bishop d7 is the annoying is the annoying idea. D7. That's the problem. No, uh, that is a bit annoying. But we could go. We can give a check yeah. and a check on D two and then go on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that that would be fine. This yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I think, um, uh, I mean, Knight B six, Knight C five, they're both nice tricks. But I think, uh, um, yeah, this has got to be good. Yeah, I mean, the the only thing. Mm, no, that's nothing at all. No, no. So uh, I think this is just good. Yeah, I think knight. Uh, yeah, knight. If knight We're going to take the c pawn now as well, aren't we? Yeah, we're taking the c pawn there with check and then going. Uh, yeah. So I mean, it's uh, it should be just uh, comfortably winning. So yeah, no. I mean, um, uh, if this knight b six check uh, trick isn't working, then um, then it's rather sad actually, because um, uh, yeah, then then white's got then white's really got nothing at all. Yeah, I think Ravi did check it out. He spent 14 minutes on the move mm. knight f6. Yeah, so I think he will have... Uh, It'll be so he yeah. can defend, yeah. Yeah, or, it's very, I mean, you know, even if you miss it, to be honest, knight e4 is so natural. Unless you panic mm. completely, then uh, you're going to find it. So mm. it's not actually a great... <laughs> from that point of view, it's not a great trap, you know, because uh, even falling into it is... Uh, <laughs> yes. is uh, so yeah, no, looking good, looking very good for uh, for Ravi there. Uh, Thomas Ford in big problems. Okay. So, oh, okay, so Matty Matty played it differently. He played uh, Queen C two. Mm, he took the queens off straight away. Mm, interesting. Yes. Rook c5, bishop b7. I'm not sure this is so. Hmm, okay. I'm not sure really. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure this is so so amazing, really. Excuse me. I mean, we, we're going to bring uh, we're going to bring the king round to d6. Certainly, if the rook, if a pair of rooks gets exchanged. We bring the um, the king round to d6, and then you're completely covered. So um, I don't think this is a, a real advantage for uh, for white. No, looks quite level, doesn't you know, it? I mean, yeah. Bishop g4 to c8 is always an idea. You know, you're going to try and swap off the um, 
the um, uh, the bishops and then get the get might go e three. Well, you've got to watch. Yeah, at some stage, you've got to watch out because there's all you know. But probably bishop g four, you go king f six, and bishop c eight. Maybe you'd take take and go e three or something, and uh, and somehow just get enough counterplay. You know, it's um, yeah. I'm not sure. I, I don't like this plan very much, really. I think uh, I think keeping the queens on and just going on the c file was quite quite decent. I think. So Jonah's position is fine. He's a little bit short on time. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this is going to be his uh, his little problem. Uh, if he has to make some uh, just a few little end game decisions, then. Uh, but if, if um, I think it's quite crucial now for um, uh, for Matty to um, uh, to do something at least that doesn't allow Black to just go King F six E six D six because that's so easy to play, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think once you've done that, then. You know, then you can get your bishop active and go bishop c6, bishop d7. I mean, I really think you've got no problems then. So, you know, we need we need a line that stops that. King okay, So he might be planning if king f6, he might be planning something like bishop g4. Could be, yeah. Although h5, oh, what? And then you just drop back to h3. Well, go bishop c8, maybe. You know, that's also uh, that's possible. Just do it like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that, but uh, could be an idea that one. I mean, from that point of view, h5 might be an idea for uh, for black, just to uh, stop bishop g4 and then bring the king uh, f6 e6. But h5 does weaken the uh, the g6 pawn, so that would h5 straight away. Yeah. Um, I mean, th then then you might go rook c3, um, and then if the king moves over, then you'll have a rook g3 to attack the g6 pawn. So it's it's a little bit. Yeah, not, not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it. I, I think that King F6 is a better move, but um... so just King F6 here, and then maybe Bishop G4. Yeah, and then if you do H5, you don't need to do H5, but if you do, yeah. then and Bishop C8. <coughs> yeah. Possible. Possible. And then we'd have the possibility of a rook and pawn endgame. Indeed. Which the crowd would like. The crowd uh, love it. The crowd, that's all crowd, the crowd wants. This that crowd, is. that's their favourite. So we've got to hope for that. Ah, so h5 played. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's, you know, that's understandable why. Because um, that rook ending is not easy to evaluate. Jonah does not want the rook ending, even no. though the crowd is calling out for it. The crowd goes wild. Yes. The crowd is looking for this exchange of bishops. It's not happening. Jonah's blocked it. So I think probably, yeah, we'll probably see maybe something like rook c3, then king e1, d2, something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure checkmate a lot. I'm, 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 uh, it's just that um, there's a lot of weak pawns, you know, um, isolated pawns in White's position, a5, d4, a2. So whenever it's like that, I always have a feeling that there, there'll be a way for Black to get his rook active and um, and take uh, the crowd is waiting to see the dessert choices. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, yeah. Guitar Man. Well, I have been having Jaffa cakes, Guitar Man. Um, but not the normal orange Jaffa cakes, but cherry Jaffa cakes. They're very oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Um, you should have you should have seen me uh, a Guitar Man. I had a creme brulee at uh, at uh, at uh, recently last time. So I had a choice. Uh, I could have gone for the uh, for the sticky toffee pudding, <laughs> uh, but, um, but the creme brulee one, and it was gorgeous. It's. Um, I once had. Um, I, I once. Uh, uh, so at the time I beat Karpov, I think um, I was having a horrific tournament and then beat Karpov, and then I ordered five desserts. Ooh. And ate them all, of course. Did that help? Uh, Is it obviously uh, did if you beat Karpov? Well, I mean, it was after beating Karpov. It was just. Ah. I felt I needed to celebrate in some way, so yes. five desserts felt like the uh, the minimum I could do. Yes. All right, this isn't going to be rock and pawning ending yet, so we'll come back to it when it is. All right. <laughs> and if, if it isn't, then we're just never going to look <laughs> at the game. If it again. doesn't turn into that, we're just not going to waste our time on it. Okay. Um, 
So what did uh... so this was the Windy Two game? Uh, yeah. So okay. we yeah. have Windy yeah. Two. Twenty-seven. Oh. Yeah, he, he repeated with ninety-eight. Uh, Knight f six. We did a bit of checking back and forwards, and then um, Queen takes d two. Takes ninety-eight. Oh, I wonder whether is he going for? Yeah, okay, it, it's sensible. I mean, it's a bit short of time now, so uh, sensible to, uh, to 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 you know add some repetitions there. That's good. Uh, good practical play. No, no, no. Actually, it was. Um, um, it's actually quite a sad game, really, um, because um, well, I played him at. Ra I was. I was. Uh, it was a tournament in which we played uh, <laughs> combined rapid and blindfold, and uh, I started off very well in the in the rapid. I was playing quite well. Um, but unfortunately, I'd completely underestimated the um, uh, the challenge of the blindfold. I'd done some practice games, and I'd done very well. Um, but somehow, um, uh, the way that it was set up, um, where you didn't see your opponent, actually, you just had a computer screen, and the moves, one move popped up, basically, and then you just had to input your, your, your position in there. I just, yeah, I found it really hard. I didn't really know what I was, you know... I wasn't. It didn't feel like I was playing, uh, you know, uh, um, top level chess there, really. You know, and uh, and uh, yeah, I just suffered uh, quite badly. I, I started with naught out of six or something, but then I played Karpov, and um, well, I drew the rapid game with Karpov, which was nice. It was slightly better, but uh, but drew. And then um, afterwards, we played the blindfold, and um, uh, I mean, I did my yeah, I did my normal, I did my normal, um, you know, uh, just rubbish basically in the blindfold uh the sun said i played e5 to e4 attacking his queen mm -hmm. uh, he whipped out rook takes f7 and um well uh so so i looked at it and i thought well i'm pretty sure you know i'm having a rough rough time in the in the um in the uh um in in the old blindfold but i'm pretty sure that i can play e takes d3 and take his queen mm -hmm. And um, well, I mean, he was, you know, I was here and he was, he was some way, quite a way on, on the table, you know, opposite his computer screen. But I, I played E takes D3 and then looked across at him. And I've never seen a look of such horror on his face. Yeah. And realized that he'd forgotten <laughs> that his queen. <laughs> so that was my famous win against Karpov. It was, um, it was quite, uh, quite, quite hilarious, it must be said. So I'm slightly more uh, I'm more happy with the rapid game that I drew rather than the uh, <laughs> than the uh, the blindfold game that I uh, that I won. Yeah, if I hadn't attacked his queen, Wilsonia, he couldn't have fallen. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, thing is, he thought you know basically I, I was playing so badly. Uh, the first couple of games actually with blindfold were fine, but then I just got. Uh, I got completely panicked about it. And, um, you know, I was playing so badly, of course, you know, he just thought, you know, he thought anything went really, you know, it's, uh, yeah, no, that was, uh, um, I should have done better with the Amber. That was really, uh, I'm very upset with myself looking back. <laughs> the death of his grandmaster blunders played a chess. Yeah, but Karpov was playing blindfold. I mean, I was too, of course, but uh, so it is kind of, um, kind of uh, understandable. So yeah, we've got this position now. Um, actually, um, Andrew's played it so that he's keeping a pair of rooks on the board. Yeah, um, that's the normal thing, isn't it? If you've got one rook and they've got two, you try and keep the rook on. Okay. Have you heard that? Yeah, that's normal. That's a normal thing. All right. Okay. No, no never heard it before. Ah, no, I. Oh, I heard that when I was a kid, and like I read about it. Like if you, yeah, if if, if one side's just got the one rook, and you've got the two, you try and exchange off that rook. Um, yeah. Oh, I thought that was a common thing that was talked about. <laughs> yeah, because um, you then, yeah, then you. It's just like um, the rook can do rookie things. I don't know. Oh, the Larry Christensen one with Queen D one. Yes, that's right, guitar man. Yes. That was that was hilarious as well. Just uh yeah, Kopov's made a few a few blunders in this time. I mean the one against Kasparov allowing Queen takes D seven was also quite uh quite um quite bad as well. He's got a few entries in there. It's um so yeah, this is slightly better for white, really. Um 
you know, just uh, quite, um, yeah, quite pleasant, really, you know, just, um, uh, but, I, you know, I think uh, if, if this was a, an engine game, um, then I'd, uh, I would say that um, I'd be pretty certain that uh, the black would draw this. Um, but uh, yeah, human game, but still going to be quite tough to make progress, I think, because um, uh, they, you can't really move that. I mean, if you move the E3 pawn, then we get rook D3, which is going to be, you know, rather annoying. Um, and if you don't move the E pawn, there's, well, you're always going get, to get attacked somehow. And uh, it's not easy to see, you know, how, how do you, your pieces are fine as they are, they're keeping the rooks at bay, but how do you move them so that they they still protect stuff, but they're attacking other stuff? I, I don't really know, to be honest. So, um, um, I suppose white could maneuver the knight, like f1, e3, d5. Yeah, that's possible. Um, yeah, but I could play, yeah. Thing is, yeah, rookie, rookie one followed by e four is is natural. It's just that I'm a bit worried about stuff like, um, yeah, e four rook d three. I mean, I play king f seven here now, maybe, and after e four, I'd want to go rook d three. Hi, Yodan Kamun. Rookie Hi. one followed by e four. Is it good? Um, we will find out. I should think. Yeah, I think king f seven would be quite uh, decent now. And if e4, we go rook d3 simply, you know, just uh, try and uh, try and do that. Bishop e4, possible to. Little bit. Not 100% sure about that one, to be honest. I think, I think it's going to make, um, I think, ah. Uh, Ha, you can watch both. Is Mr. Dodgy on uh, on air, Percy? He is. He's got two viewers at the moment. I think he's ah. just... Well, what we'll do, if we come off the air first, which I think we will, um, at two o'clock we'll come off the air, won't we? Then we can raid Mr. Yeah. Dodgy. Fantastic. So, um, okay. Yeah, King F7. Okay, let's have a look. Ravi. Let's have a look at Ravi then, because he's apparently he's weaving a mating net. Oh, let's see Ravi weaving his mating net against Tamas Fodor he's playing. So he's done knight f6, which is what we saw. Oh, if we've got we've got it, we've got it. He's done the knight takes b6. That was your move, Matthew. A takes rook a7. Knight e4. We looked at all of this. Rook takes king f6. Rook f3. Okay, we did. We were looking at all of this. Yeah, well, no, we were looking at the. Uh, I was uh, thinking that maybe White needed to try and sacrifice the exchange, but uh, Tamas has gone yeah. for the old um, uh, knight d six. Hmm. Actually, this is looking a little bit worrying. Um, so knight f five, king d three, then this rook g g two. Yes. Hmm. Okay, and rook g g two threatens rook. Yeah, this is completely. Two and then completely winning i think yeah c4 rook d2 check king c3 rook c2 check king b3 i've got knight d4 at the very least so um uh so this is so we, we're thinking this one yeah it's a complete win yeah yeah it's just winning yeah he's played it uh so c4, c4 rook d2 check why c4 well i'm thinking rook d2 check aren't i yeah Yes, okay, so c4, rook d2. Oh, actually, uh, come to think of it, um, rook, g, rook g c2 is winning on the spot. Ah, cutting off the escape. 1 0. Yeah. Ravi Haria is on four out of four in the Wood Green Invitational. What? How really, amazing. Really impressive game, really, I have to say. Really impressive. Look, because yeah. look, he's on four out of four, he needs uh, seven out of nine for a GM norm. So he needs. Three out of the next, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't get easier in this tournament, but he he needs three out of the next five um, to get a GM norm. So absolutely fantastic, fantastic. Ravi. Yeah, well very good game. Very um, good game. Yeah. Because he could have done some drawing lines earlier on and he chose to um, keep keep the game alive and keep on playing for the win. 
yeah, yeah. So I mean, the big credit to Tamas as well because, uh, yeah, you know, we could have just had a um, a short draw, but uh, he, you know, he wanted to play for the win, so uh, that is brilliant. You know. Now I said we weren't going to come back to this unless it turned into a rook and pawn ending, but I didn't mean it. We are. We're back. You didn't mean it. No. Mean it. Well, yeah. So I'm not quite sure. What, oh, I don't think this is really. This isn't really doing it for me uh, the way that white. So this was yes, this was the plan you were saying. Black should try and get it in king f six. Yeah. And and no, um, I, I'm thinking that white should really play the rook on the third rank to be able to do something like rook yeah. g three or, you know, to to to, to try and um. Uh, but yeah, it's brought the king to e three now. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, white white, white is um, a little bit better here, but it, it's it's not. Yeah, I think I think it's really decreased an awful lot uh, the advantage. So um, yeah, I mean I think we go bishop c six with black probably. That's one good um, uh, general line, and then yeah, I don't know. I mean maybe we just wait with rook f seven or something. You know, I mean it's uh, um, I don't I don't I'm, I'm not very sure at all what um, what uh, wife is going to have now. Yeah. Okay. Because I mean especially on the you know on the, on the queen side you know that yeah. You, you don't have any any breaks there, really. You know, a four is not that that dangerous, and uh, you have a pawn a five actually stops you know any pieces coming in. So yeah, yeah, this one's uh, probably odds on for a draw at the moment. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. We were just looking at Andrew Great, weren't we? Let's see a Mark Hepton. Oh yeah, this could be a very interesting one. Uh, okay, so f six was played. Ooh, 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 I don't, mm. so e4 was played, f5, e takes d5, e takes d5, ooh, okay. Okay, so now black has a plus point. We were talking about the part, the white's past c pawn. We were also thinking about white trying to create a past h pawn, um, but now black has a past pawn as well, this d pawn. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, and G four. So I guess White's plan is to swap off one pair of pawns and then try and take that the behind yeah. G pawn and then get the H pawn. Yeah. The, the only problem is that um, uh, with all these pawns now, it, when you queen your H pawn, put it that way, you will have lost all of your kingside pawns. Yeah. Um, which then means that um, you've got to start thinking about bishop and wrong coloured. Um, yeah. The bishop being the wrong coloured square for the other side's rook pawn. The a pawn. Yeah. So um, I think the I think the Marx is drawing chances of of uh, yeah have definitely increased this way. I sort of feel like it will be draw. G five. So Bishop D. He's going to try and take this one off. G six. So. He doesn't want to take it yet because it allows king b6 so um uh so then the question is how are we going to do this progress yeah um yeah i mean uh, so mark's mark's going to play for a4 isn't he he's, he's going to try and do this yeah so yeah, just just can i just ask something though say um takes take then here to get to this pawn what if you do this is that bad or what's this king and pawn ending like because i was just thinking oh i was thinking like could try and create a pass pawn but maybe i'm going to answer my own question and, and black can do an early kind of g5 and stop it all hmm intriguing yeah, probably actually, probably in this specific position, takes that would that would work, but then that would make a very a very dangerous idea. Then if you had h four in already, well, that's what I was going to say. So then logically, the next thing is before you t oh you can't go h four before you take it. Obviously, can you? So you take no. you can't get it to work. Anyway, he's gone king c three. That's an interesting idea. Very interesting idea. So king b six, king b a seven, waiting. He's gone a four. Da, da, da. And then bishop d6. All right. 
Um, so what's Mark going to try? Is he going to try and... Uh, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, he's going to try and come round again now, but I think Marx will just meet it with bishop c5 at some stage. Um, so I don't think really that... Um, uh, that this is going to work at all. I think also without that pawn on a4, without yeah, yeah. too yeah. many pawns swapped off now, isn't it? Too really? many pawns have been swapped off now. So I think uh, we we are heading for a draw, which would be a, a I would say a, a stellar defensive performance from uh, from from Marcus. Yeah, it was looking really difficult, wasn't it? Um, Hebs, yeah, for Hebs is getting these really good positions, isn't he? Because he drew the one we looked at. Um... It's the morning, the as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but so it's, playing, better, uh, it's better that better getting the good positions and drawing them than not getting the good positions yeah. at all. He's playing That's better. Cool. I think. I think Mark's playing better than I've uh, than we've seen him certainly during the, the online. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I don't think online suited him at all. But I, I, it's you know, I think it's very good to see Mark playing at this level because I think he's yeah. uh, he's playing extremely well. Yeah. So um, uh, yeah, King A six. I think it's. Uh, I yeah. think Mark must be very happy. I think he should be. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think, what, yeah, as you say, yeah, well, he wasn't happy with all this Corona stuff. No, as none really. of us were, but I think especially Mark wasn't. Yeah, no, it, it, his play when he was playing online didn't look at all. You know, it didn't look like Mark really at all. You know, it was. Uh, I think he he really. Um, yeah, you know, he, he thrives on the um, on on the. Um, uh, he thrives on the old, um, uh, you know, the conflict at the board and, uh, you know, the uh, the atmosphere and everything. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Well, he's it, very not, sociable, isn't he? He's extremely sociable, Mark. Yeah, so, yeah of course. Yeah. Yeah. Is Bishop B6 good? In which position checkmate a lot? In, in this position or? Not not this one, I think. Well, yeah, C7. Yeah, C7 is, uh, yeah. So, uh, no, this is fine. I think this is just um, waiting... Uh, um, just waiting to um, uh, see how it goes. Yeah, it's going to be fun seeing Karpov and, uh, and Nigel uh, playing. It is nice to have tournaments that aren't just the same people all the time. I do have to mm. say, it's um, uh, yeah. You know, of course, you know that there is fantastic drama from time to time. Um, you know, or quite often maybe in uh, in these uh, um, elite events. But I do have to say that I find it hard to distinguish from them now. You know, with um, there seems to be uh, so many. Uh, tournaments with elite players you know it's uh in terms of when a game was played i used to follow all this and know all this but I, it's impossible nowadays you know and uh yeah just it's just then nice to have tournaments with different people you know that you can really it really fixes it oh that's you know like that like the wood green invitational <laughs> indeed, indeed which is really nice it's really yeah. it's really yeah. nice yeah you know you don't need to see the elite players all the time every single day of the week really is my feeling you know I think uh, there's a lot of, you know, I mean, uh, you know, we're talking about these, these are the top uh, British players, you know, uh, um, a lot of them. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I mean, uh, promising, uh, promising players, you know, and, and all this. And, and we've got a, we're getting fantastic entertainment, you know, so. Um, uh, yeah, there's yeah. been some really good games we've been following. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, you know, so. Um, well, I'm going to move on from this because I think it's drawn. Okay, fair enough. I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but. Uh, let's go back to here, which was um, Matthew Turner is now coming in with rook c5. Yeah, I mean, bishop c6 is the is the safe route. Um, uh, yeah, rook f5 would probably be uh, possible as well. Um, bishop b6, you might get a4. So I think bishop c6 is kind of the, uh, you know, uh, the simple way to do it. And I think this is just, uh, you know, this is going to be a draw as well. Yeah, I mean, elite players against slightly below is nice. You know, uh, you get people in like Jabava or uh, Richard Rapport or, you know, or uh, or even, you know, below that, you know, that level. And um, and they they shake up tournaments very nicely, you know, and uh, um, and you sort of notice that, uh, you know, that. Uh, Probably in terms you, of Matthew, would you fancy a match against you know if they they lined you up against all the top juniors? Would you fancy that? No, I leave that to Magnus. Uh, <laughs> Magnus is always, <laughs> that's one of one of the amazing things that Magnus does. He plays all these blitz matches <laughs> against uh, twenty top juniors. You know, it's um, uh, yeah, no, 
I, I, yeah, I don't know. Could, could be, uh, could, could be possible, but uh, yeah, it's it's quite. Um, it would be uh, would be quite tough. It's, it's, so I think I find it for the senior players. They're kind of putting themselves on the line a bit more than the junior players, aren't they? That is true. I mean, I, I do remember that Nigel many years ago. This was the one coaching I had actually as a as a as a junior. Um, um, you know, centrally organised coaching, and that was you know two days with Nigel uh, in London, which was incredible. You know, and uh, I was maybe. 11, 12 at the time. But uh, yeah, Nigel played, uh, you know, basically the 20 top juniors in a simul, in a clock simul. And uh, that was pretty tough. He he had a, he had mm -hmm. a, he had a pretty difficult time. I mean, I think he scored very well in the end, you know, but uh, Nigel was uh, super strong, of course, uh, um, uh, already then. But, um, but yeah, yeah, you know, it was, uh, that was quite tough for him. Yeah, no, that's right. 20 top players, 2300s, very, very nice, you know. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, you know even games you know between the top players and uh, yeah twenty six hundreds are, are also can also be very instructive you know it's uh, I've played actually at uh, Siegermans before that was uh, nineteen ninety five I played there very nice place in uh, in Sweden in uh, Malmo so um, um, it was. Uh, I was, I was <laughs> actually. Uh, I remember it for for being one second away from giving up my professional chess career <laughs> because um, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd I'd just been having a really rough time and I, I wasn't improving. Uh, I was just sort of stuck on about twenty five, uh, twenty five fifty something like that, and um, and I was just completely fed up. And uh, so, um, but I said, okay, I'll, I'll just try one last tournament, which is always a terrible thing to do. And uh, in the first round, I. I played appallingly, so badly, and lost like an absolute child to Ulf Anderson. Um, you know, gave him an ending, and then played the ending badly as well. You know, so really awful. And then uh, I, um, well, I, I, I drew a, a, a decent game, and then, um, but then I lost to, um, yeah, uh, probably one of the weaker players in the tournament. I mean, it's Johan Helston. He was uh, an IM at the time. He became a GM, but. Um, but yeah, you know, really the guy that um, you'd expect to do something. And with White, I lost against him. Again, you know, he played well and I played really badly. So, you know, this was just like really terrible. And um, and I um, I was, uh, I um, uh, I think I drew another game after that. But I was, you know, I think after I lost to Johan Helston, I think it's the only time I've ever done it. But I was uh, walking through the streets just uh, in tears and crying. I was just totally, um, uh, totally, um, um, yeah everything was uh, was terrible but um but then after i played um i drew my next game then i played ivan sokolov as uh, as white and um we got to a position where i actually was winning but uh, we were playing with the old clocks and um um i must have had literally for my last five moves well one or two seconds on my clock i mean it was the, the clock was so yeah, hard yeah. You just couldn't believe it, and I managed to deliver mate with uh, with my. Uh, or I managed to play my fortieth move, which was decisive, you know. And but I mean, there was no time left whatsoever. So it just, I'm amazed my clock held. And after that, I won my last four as well, and uh, ended up coming second in the tournament, you know. And uh, then decided that I wasn't going to retire and I was going to carry on. But uh, if that, um, you know, if that analog flag had uh, had fallen, I would have um, I would have uh, stopped, you know. Uh, probably, yeah, yeah, three or four years earlier, my I would have stopped my professional career. I remember there was this one tournament, and it was a time you were in time trouble. But the guy, you, what did you do? You queened your pawn slightly illegally, and the guy claimed it or something. Yeah, that was this rapid tournament. So I, I, I mean, I come on, I'm a queen and and, and a piece up, and um, you know, but uh, you know, it was a rapid tournament, and I played. Um, I played uh, queen, and I, I'm not quite sure what I did illegally. Maybe I, I think I pressed, I put the pawn down, pressed the clock, and then put a piece on there. And he claimed it. He claimed it. And he got and it, top, didn't he? It was yeah, on top shocking. of that. On, it was a bit shocking. Of, yeah. And on top of that, he won the tournament as well, just with this. And he claimed it so unpleasantly as well. So, and, oh, awful. You know, really, uh, really in a, in a way that, that, um, that uh, you know, that, you, that made you feel... You know, doubly bad for everything. So um, no, I, I I don't like that guy. <laughs> I don't like him at all. Right, so, checkmate um, is suggesting a plan here for White with Bishop D one and F three, and actually okay. at the same time Matthew Turner then did play Bishop F one. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, 
yeah, I mean it's it's definitely the definitely a plan a plan to play. Um but um I don't know how don't know how dangerous it is. I think if we just stay with our rook, just sort of uh um just so maybe F three now. Yeah, rookie seven would have been a, a nice um a nice uh, safe response, it's true. But I don't think we I mean he could play rookie eight now in actual fact. That would also be possible. And yeah. yeah, you know, is it just pretty equal? It's pretty equal, really. I mean, I think we can get you know, we can get round two, yeah. But I think we take on f3 then, and then we go rookie one or something to take here, like that. Yeah, I may be just suicide, suiciding myself, but uh, that's maybe then we'll try this one, all right, if you have to. Ah, uh, maybe this is not, uh, maybe this is not clever, maybe this is not clever. Yeah, maybe if we just take on f3 and then just wait with a, with rook f7. I think that would be the uh, the sensible thing to do. So, so here. After, yeah, so after f no after f3 just go uh, e takes f3. Takes. We should take wait. Yeah, rook f7 or something uh, or rook f5 even if you want to. And then just ask white, you know, how how are you going to proceed here? Yeah. Nothing um, much to be done. I don't, yeah, I mean, you know, white's a little bit better, but as soon as the, um, hey, hello, Raylin. Hello, Raylin. As soon as the, um, as the bishop, as the rook moves from c5, then I go bishop d7, you know, and uh, and then my bishop's free and helping to defend everything. So, yeah, I don't think, I don't think we, you know, we can really make that much of this one. I don't think. Um, black feels uh, all right to me. Where are you now, Raylin? Because I'm just thinking if you're in... You were in America, weren't you? If you're in America, it must be early morning for you. It's um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I would expect this to be a draw. You know, I don't think uh, I don't think there's quite enough. Oh, uh, Mark against uh, Marcus with a draw. There, Marcus so. has has turned into a draw. Uh, he did get to this um, h4 pass pawn, but uh, it's not going to be enough to. To win, indeed not. Okay, let's see this one. Okay, now what's been happening here? So, um, oh, okay, uh, oh, 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 dear me! I'm going back to somewhere random. Eight twenty-four a.m. Just arrived home from night shift. Oh my goodness! Was. Oh, night shift. That's tough. H5, but GH. Oh, and now rookie three. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, this is looking a bit tricky now. More than a bit tricky, I think. I think it's probably just lost. Oh, rookie seven. Oh, gosh. Rookie seven, rookie seven just winning a piece. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, because you still had rook D6, D7 just to try and, you know... Uh, just to try and hold it together, but rookie seven just wins wins the whole house. Yep. What happened there? Oh my goodness. So uh yeah, just lost lost attention lost there, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rook sixty seven was still well, it's ropey. I mean it's definitely ropey, you know, uh that is definitely true. But uh there was still some sort of hope there. But um yeah, this is uh this is this is gone. Oh, hard luck, uh, Jonathan. It was a great, uh, was a great fight. It was a really great game, but um, uh, just uh, yeah, just a, a little blunder there. It's uh... yeah, because now it's like two pieces and um, pawn for the yeah, the king's the king, the black king. Yeah, no, it's really hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah now it's hopeless. This one. It's, um, what's the weather like where you are, Raylin? Are you? Uh, is it nice and sunny, or um... oh, it's North Carolina sounds sunny to me. I don't know why. Okay, so we just have this one, which we think should turn into a draw. Indeed, this is what we're expecting to this one to uh, end up in a draw. Mm -hmm. I think, oh, I think, um, uh, I, think uh, I think they're repeating actually. I think Matthew went bishop c two. 
he went bishop d1 rook f8 bishop c2 rook f7 so yeah this isn't the position then natasha oh, sorry it's not the position at all we can have a look at this position but it isn't what's on the board sunny yay <clears throat> that must make a difference coming home from the night shift if it's uh nice uh, sunny weather rather than uh, ra rather than uh, gray and depressing <laughs> it's again less important if you're on night shift i would have thought <laughs> No, 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 but it's 8.24, so she just arrived home yeah. from night shift, uh, Raylin said. Yeah. So you want the weather to be nice, don't you, when uh, when you arrive home? It's uh, Although maybe that makes it more difficult to sleep on. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if, if the weather's nice outside. I don't think I could do a night shift. I, I don't think I'd ever be able to get to sleep uh, properly. Because I guess you're not you're not doing night shift all the time, are you? You're doing, uh, you're doing it uh, just... Uh, just occasionally or something that seems sounds so difficult to me just to uh to do that because from time to time i have to work um you know during the night or something uh, being in it and all that so uh, you always have to to do the big stuff when people are uh, permanent night shift for three years my wow. goodness well, at wow. least you're accustomed to it you'll know all the tricks and what you have to do wow good lord Bishop B2 and A4 says so checkmate a lot. Yeah. Try. Like after A4, we just take it, I think, and Bishop A6, we go Rook A7. And uh, you could put the Rook on the B file and try and do that, but even that doesn't feel, uh, yeah. But I mean, uh, you know, I think, you know, Matty's going to, uh, just going to go for the old uh, grind and, uh, and uh, you know, try and uh, play on Jonas time because Jonas is going to be on increments for. Uh... That's true. Yeah, yeah. That will yeah, It's it's always a bit nerve wracking, isn't it, when you're down to. Yeah, no. I mean, you can, you can sort of do it fine, but um, but the nerves build up, and then at some stage something confuses you, you know, which you can't really predict, but you just get confused by something, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's uh, the tension hits. Let's just see if the other game has finished. Uh, it has not finished yet, but uh, it is is winning for. Yeah, no, I mean we can play bishop e five. All of white's pieces are super solid there, so uh, there's pawns to attack. So uh, yeah, you know it's. Uh, I bet black has to go king g four now. I think because I think if you allow king g three, yeah. then uh, okay, so he's done that. But uh, yeah, this is, in principle, this is uh, this should be trivial for. Uh, yeah. I mean, one of the ideas would be to play um, uh, h5 simply. And then if uh, king takes h5, I've got rook h7 check and rook h4. Yeah. And if gh, then I go rook g7 check, king h3, rook g3 mate. So uh, h5 here actually would be really strong. Completely winning. So, yeah. It's... Uh, This is all fine too. Yeah, you just you can't go wrong with this, really. You know, I mean, I think I think uh, probably Andrew is, is preparing H five here. Actually, yeah, uh, I think that's the point. But um, he didn't nah, didn't need to, but it's uh, it's it's fine. Should we just see if I click the next round? Does it tell us who they play? Indeed, just click on yeah, five. Yeah. <clears throat> so, just um we won't be covering this afternoon but just uh, so you know what's what games to expect um marcus harvey is taking on thomas fodor uh jonathan blackburn against hebs oh that's an interesting they put a result in that that that, that doesn't uh, it's jonah willow against andrew well, green they've played it have they played it already maybe they ah it's possible it's been played already you just click on it actually does it give a game or uh no, no, I have nothing. I think, I think that's just a technical yeah. glitch. Um, but Dave Fitzsimmons against Matt Turner. And... Well, it would be nice if you could reserve a result against people early on. <laughs> yeah, pick a result anytime. Free, play your wild card, and then you can just kind of get the result you want for that particular game. Um, yeah, and Ravi Harriet playing Borna Derek Shani. So that's a look ahead. Fantastic. Okay, so Andrew Greek has now won against Northern Blackburn. So there's just um, one game left, if I can actually click on it. Matthew Turner against Jonah Willow. 
Okay. So, um, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a, yeah, I think a, a spit. Yeah. I don't know how. Hmm. Not to make progress. Well, no, I, I'm just wondering how effective it is. I mean, Matt is, um, uh, oh, well, yeah, I mean, Jonah, Jonah could be playing fast in return, you know, because he's played bishop b1, a2, b3, and building up time, really. So um, it's a bit uh, slightly... You mean... Now, I'm wondering about the technique. I mean, because, you, you know, you can play moves, you know, play around and um, and try and build up time. You know, you try and run your opponent shorter time, but actually it just looks like um, like Jonah's actually built up time whilst uh, Matty's been playing bishop b1 a2 b3 you know that sort of thing so so the moves uh, aren't problematic enough the moves aren't problematic enough you know you need to if you need those moves you need to, you need to have something that um uh yeah that at least makes the opponent think a little bit or, or doubt a little bit so um <clears throat> and i don't think that any of those moves really i mean i think the only thing you've really got you know is is, is uh to have the bishop on yeah, maybe D one or something like that. And uh, I mean, ideally, I think you would you wouldn't mind trying to move the rook round to to G three, for example. You know, try a different angle. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> it's a little bit tough to uh, to do. Well, I guess you could go rook C three, king E two, and do it that yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, that would be the uh, rook C three would be the best uh, from that point of view, and then king E two. You, I mean, you might get hit. The thing is, I was just wondering after King e2, you might get hit with Rook f4. That's a bit of the annoying thing. And then it's attacking the pawn h4. And if you go g3, then you just go back, you know, and, and, yeah. and you've got that chance. But uh, yeah, it might be worth it might be worth giving a go. Um, the other way you could do it is to go Rook c1 to h1 to h3. Yes. Um, Bishop c2 says Chess Patzer, and try. Yeah, to we, we've been we've been looking at that. It's that. I don't know. I don't think it's the problem is when you go bishop c2 and, and that sort of stuff, then um um a hey, hello. Um then um the, the bishop on c6 gets to move, you know, and uh and then it can sort of assist with um with the old um yeah. he's done it, he's done but he's he's playing chess pets's plan. Bishop c2. So are we gonna see f3 next? Yeah, it's possible, possible. Or is he going to try for 49 moves and then do a pawn move at the end? Well, that's possible as well, of course. Then we all really know that um, that Matty's been watching computer chess. <laughs> Rooting for you and TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're playing. It's, it's at the Northumbria Masters. I think Chess Pats is playing at the Northumbria Masters. Ah. Ah, yes, very so, good. Um, well, we are doing, we're covering just only two hours of that. Um, <laughs> we're covering two hours on Friday morning. Um, and then the rest of the time, Tim Wall and um, Andrew Martin are doing commentary. That's quite a good move, Bishop d7. If King e2, we could probably go Bishop g4 check just to... Uh, um, to annoy you a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, this is a bit, this is a bit tough, this one. Do it's TV Tom Villiers. TV, I'm trying to think of TVs. F3 played. Yes. Indeed, you're a gem now, Jess Patzer. Guessing, uh, guessing the move of a gem. Yeah. Yep. The equivalent Play to like gem. A so I'm just, yeah. Oh, he's playing oh, well. Fantastic. Lovely. So rook f6, I guess, is the most sensible here. Do 
GMs get pizza and amateurs get toast. Very good. We're so near. <laughs> Yeah, we're eating pizza on stream. It's really not we very good. Thing, it. we, yes, not today. We we turned off today. Why not yeah. Bishop F five for yeah, black? I'm, yeah, I'm, Bishop... I'm a little bit worried about uh, taking on F five and then uh, Rook C eight after. I'm not hundred percent sure that I've got that all covered. So take F five. Rook F five and then Rook C eight. Yeah. I'm then a bit worried about that. One. So, well, I tell uh, you what. I tell you what. You do get. You get your rook and pawn ending. That is true. So I guess black goes rook f six here to cover. Mm. Possibly feels a bit dodgy. <laughs> At which point we should really move. <laughs> Move the stream over to um, to Mr. Dodgy. Um, ah, yes. Rook a6. Yeah, rook a8. I mean, yeah, I could maybe. Mm. An extra commentator. Um, chess pats, we're not covering the next round. If, do you mean you're going to stream it? That's fine. But no, we just, uh, just did these uh, two morning rounds. Yes. It's uh, possible. So it would be absolutely if you if you were free to stream it, it would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it's a um, lot of and, like uh, you can. Oh, you want to join us? Um, you'd be very welcome. Except we're not doing it. <laughs> we'll, we'll do. We we can. We'll find another time and you join us. Yeah. But definitely, I mean, join us for one of the quarantine leagues or something sometime very soon. Yeah. So Rook F6 played. Not this position, then. It's actually one, one there. Uh... I'm trying to understand the chat. <laughs> right, where, where do you want to oh, go? It's, it's, a book. it's Peter Wells's book. Ah, right, 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 right. That's the, uh, that's the big topic of discussion. Um, OK, so we need to uh, find a move here for Black. Of which there are a reasonable amount. Um, bishop e6, bishop c6. I mean, one idea for for white uh, for white might be to some stage to play f4 to f5. That's possible with the bishop on c6 and then e, gf king f4. You know that sort of thing. Not yet. Um, but I think probably the next thing that he'll try will be to play um, rook c1 to g1. Yeah. Uh, so do you think white has a little bit, a little bit of play here then? Yeah, I mean white's got, white's got a little bit of play. White's got a little bit of play, but I do think that I, I would expect this to end up as a draw. Yeah. But uh, but white white can why can push? I mean white's got the better the better pawn structure, you know. So uh, um, plenty of weak pawns everywhere. So. Um, the Scotch game, my goodness, <laughs> that 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 is that is from a long time ago. Nineteen nineties, I think. That maybe a bit later. Yeah, so I think Rook C one will be played, um, and then Rook G one, and then Rook G five. That's probably the way to do it. Um, yeah, this is the question about when when you could do this. I mean, you, you could sort of go in with uh, with the old king f four, rook f six, king g five. Yeah, but I'm I'm taking f three and then taking a three. This is going to fizzle. Yeah. Well, we're going to lose all our pawns. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, well, your h pawn is quite fast. Uh, probably bishop g6 you play, I think. Oh, HM opening books, my goodness me. So bishop g6 is probably what you do. Um, rook a3, then I'm guessing king h5. But I don't know, I wouldn't have thought this would be, um, I wouldn't have thought this would be anything. 
I would have thought black should be holding on somehow. B4 maybe is a good idea. Yeah. I, I, I tend to think that black should, black should be holding, but yeah, I mean, these, you know, these things are always uh, a bit bananas, of course. Um, yeah, king f2 is, uh, is, is possible. And then we go, uh, then we go rook f6 again, and we're threatening rook f4. I don't know. I don't know. So just back here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then, uh, but we've had uh, we've had some moves there, Natasha. Okay, let's so. see. So, um, so bishop c six, rook c one, bishop e seven, rook g one, and bishop b eight. Bishop eight. So I guess. Um, yeah, I guess what I can do now is to play. Oh, pardon me. Uh, rook g five. E five. Yeah. Bishop f seven. And now maybe f4. It's played with g5 anyway. Yeah, which might be annoying. Hmm, interesting. With a plan to just go f5, I suppose. Yeah, you just want to go f5, gf, king f4. Um, I think at some stage now you should be getting your, yeah, rookie six check, rookie six check, rookie five. So is it bishop f7? Uh, he's played rookie six check. Yeah. Okay. Rook g5, rookie six check. Okay. We should probably go back to, um, yeah, that's a good one. That's a very good one. Checkmate a lot. King f2, we go rook f6 probably. Yeah, we can go rook e5. Then I go bishop d7 or something. Yeah, you can, uh, you know, you can, you can, you can run and run and run around with this one. You know, it's not, um, it's not hundred percent trivial for uh, certainly not trivial for black to, uh, you know, to keep it together. But I do feel really that objectively, it's going to be, uh, it's always going to end up as a draw. But, um, but yeah, I mean, some. Uh, some uh, some stuff still to do. Uh, so rookie six check, king f seven, king f two was played. So um, yeah, rook f six feels natural now. Just to go rook f four. Yeah, rook f six played. So you might see king g three. You know, just to uh, yeah, you might go rookie five. Possible as well. Yeah. <laughs> no. You would not chess patsa. You would not lose white. I mean, at some stage, you've got to watch out because, you know, you might be able to go bishop f7 and then move the king back to d7 and then go rook c6. Then you're suddenly threatening rook c3, you know, and that sort yeah. of stuff. You've got to be a little bit. Uh, got to watch out. Be a little bit careful. Um, but. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Now, I mean, rookie five, bishop f7, I don't know, king g3, king d7, you know, yeah, rook c6, rook, rook c6 could uh, end yeah. up being a little bit of a threat there, you know, so. But I mean, it's possible. It is possible to trick the opponent. You know, you just uh, you go round and round and round somehow, and then afterwards, uh, all of a sudden, you get your break, and uh, nobody knows why. You know, that's, uh, so. Uh... Rookie five, he has done. Okay, so I think yeah, it could be. I, I like this idea of going bishop f seven. I think, but. Uh... I think so. But bishop d7 you know, would also be uh, reasonable. It's just that uh, here I, I get, I maybe get some chances to, to, to free my rook. Oh, that clock time's a bit strange. I know, I, I suppose that's not real. 
I don't think that's real now. He had, he had two minutes before. Yeah. Bishop d7, he played. Okay. Yeah. All good. I mean, uh... yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, this I like Bishop d3 as well. The a4 break, I don't know. Not sure about it. Not sure about it somehow. Yeah, I more think not to actually do anything, but to just kind of have the thing lined up so Black has to think about, like, like um, sacrifice on b5 if the bishop moves, that kind of thing. So I'm guessing, yeah, I'm not, mm, okay. Um, bishop b6 now. So, I mean, let's move f4 to f5. Oh, you could go... How are you going to do this? Yeah, I mean, rook g5 now, bishop f7, and now f4 is possible, I think. Okay. Is he going to do f4? I think he's going to do f4. Matty t. f4 is what we want. Well, maybe just one more waiting move, possibly. Bishop d3 would be the waiting move. Yeah, although then you go king e7, which might be a little bit might be a little bit irritating but you, know, you could throw in a rookie five check king d7 maybe f4 okay, he's not, played he's gone f4 um i'm kind of thinking about king e7 now to be honest just to try and play uh the rook to c6 rook e6 okay that's uh okay rook e5 though You can't take that one, I don't think. I think that's too good for a white. Takes F takes C five and then King F four to G five. So, yeah. hmm, interesting. So after Rook F six, we might have F five. I think you should really keep the rooks on. I don't think. I don't think swapping off the rooks is going to going to be what you want to do. Plus a rook f6 now, f5 is, is going to be all right. Takes king f4. But then we go, yeah, I guess we're going to go rook g6 then. And uh, yeah, we will simply see. Maybe after f5, gf, you could go bishop f5 simply and keep the rook uh, a little bit boxed in. Possible. Yeah, he might do. Maybe uh, maybe Matty is going to win this one. I didn't think it was, uh, was going to be. It's poss certainly possible. I'd be very impressive if he does. Yeah. I didn't think it was really going to happen. But, um, but yeah, I get the feeling that he's uh, he's making progress. Because this might be a bit uh, annoying. Then we're going king f4 into g5, and the rook isn't getting active. So my idea of going f5, gf, king f4, I think maybe rook g6 gets possible. It's not clear, but it might be, might, might end up being possible. So, um, uh, oh gosh, he's gone. you know what? He's gone. He's gone bishop d3. Yeah, he's just waiting uh, a little bit more. Fair enough. Um, Mind you, the difference in time has, has uh, shrunk quite a lot, hasn't it? You know, I was thinking yeah. he's doing these moves to uh, try and get Jonah nervous. Um, but actually, after a while, he, he's going to not have the time advantage anymore, and then it'll be both of them nervous. Yeah, I know it's true. Um, I'm trying to think. And King D7 could be an idea. But F5 might come with uh, more power then. Yeah. Mm. Bishop B6 you could play. No, but then then uh, I guess Matty T will go Bishop Rook G5. Then Bishop F7. And then go F5. Hmm.
Yeah, not clear. Not clear. He's going to go A4 next, isn't he? <laughs> Do chess pats as I did. I'm not sure. I mean, that's quite a black gets his past A pawn as well. You know, that's yeah. what I'm that's what worries me about it. I, I think I think after Bishop E6, I think he'll go rook G5 and then Bishop F7, then he'll go F5. I think that's the the one, I think. Then the question is actually then after Oh, King D7 is gone. King okay. D7. So um hey, you're much better in disguise. So F5 now feels like tempting. Yeah. Okay. So F5. So how is this now? He doesn't have to take. No, we're going King F4 to G5. So um Yeah. Uh, he stayed F5, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is I'd be it's not over, is it? It's not over. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, mm, rook c6 maybe. Would that be an idea? I'm going to have to give up some pawns, but I, I just want to uh, uh, want to try and get some activity. All right, so what if we do king in? not pleasant uh okay gf we'll, we'll do oh uh, he's played a move actually f5 gf he's played now the interesting thing here is whether could i play rook takes f5 here yeah because i think i think i think the bishop ending is going to be very good for um Okay. It's going to be just very good for uh, for, uh, for 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 uh, uh, white, in the sense of prob prob um, probably probably. It's not obvious to me. Is that, is that because well, because I know the king's further in. Well, I mean, if you go rook f five, bishop f five, then um, I've got this move bishop c eight all the time. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. So you, you can't and. Uh, I mean, go, yeah, yeah, I go, yeah. Yeah, eight, okay. I mean, you can go, you can go, you can go king c6, um, and then I'll go uh, bishop c8, and then you go b4. Um, but, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. So king c6 straight away. Yeah, bishop, bishop c8, eight. b4, takes, a, b, king b5, king f4. But I, I'm assuming that this is going to be winning simply because uh, you go king b4, I go yeah. bishop a6. Yeah, king, king a5. Ah, oh, this is, yeah. Is this winning? Because um, how do you even take? Oh, I suppose. It's going to be very close. Okay, um, I, go, I can go bishop e2. Oh, going to be very close, this one. You would have thought I could zugzwang uh, somehow and win pawns. So I, I just go bishop e2 or something. Black goes king somewhere. Yeah, king e5. King e5. King in. King in. Um, and then I, I want to do something like uh, bishop f3. King c4. I'd like this with black. To, with um, mm. I'd like this with black to move really. No, king c4. To protect. Okay. Yeah, I'd like this with white. If I could uh, just lose a move here, then uh, you know that would be uh, incredible. So maybe I just do. I just go bishop h1 or something. Bishop h1. Bishop g8. Yeah. Bishop g2. Bishop f7. Bishop f3. Okay. Now I'm picking up the d5 pawn or the h5 pawn. But we've got mm -hmm. some moves. We've got some moves there. Um, All right. So, so rook takes f5 yeah, happened. King e7 happened. King e7. Rook takes f6. King takes. We do get into this bishop ending. King, king f4. f4. And bishop b6 now. Interesting. I think bishop b6 should be played. Stop bishop f5. I think that's the only move we've got. <clears throat> B six and yeah, we're going to get the same. We're going to get the same Zugzwang thing now. It'll go Bishop B two, Bishop F seven, uh, Bishop F three. 
Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is nice and symmetric as well, isn't it? The kings and the bishops and the H yeah. poems and the well, well played, well played, Matt. Yeah, I wasn't. Uh, I really thought that this would not. Uh... I I thought nothing was happening here, but it is. It really is. But I didn't think that this would be enough to uh, to uh, to to win, but uh, yeah, no, excellent. So we're up to this position. Yeah, now Bishop F3. Is, that must uh, be what he's planning. Bishop F3 played. So we get this lovely position. It's a nice position, isn't it? Yeah, no, very, very nice. And it's not hard, really, because there's no good pawn that you can give up, really. So, uh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, no, incredible. Well, very well played, Matty. Very good ending. So um, I think, yeah, do, I do feel that Black should have been able to to, to hold that, but somehow it, um, yeah. I mean, as soon as we played this uh, this move with f three and taking back with a g pawn, I mean, that was very important. It gave this the rook this um, this excellent uh, uh, path to the g five square, and then this f four to f five break. So uh, yeah, very very nice play. Yeah, it's showing Jonah has no time, but I guess that's it's no. just being, it's extremely accurate time here. Yeah. No. Uh, well, well, very nice. Well done, Jonah. Yeah, I mean, you're just winning one of the pawns, uh, checkmate lot. So King G6, I've got King E5, and King E6, I've got King G5. So... That should be enough to win. Okay, right. Well, some fantastic games of chess there um, in the Wood Green Invitational. Uh, let's just check the scores on the door. So we have Ravi uh, out in, clearly in the lead on four out of four. Uh, Tamas, Mark, and Marcus Harvey all doing very well on two and a half out of four. And we're particularly watching Marcus Harvey in that um, in his bid to get five out of nine. Um, to get his IM title. Um, and so he'd need just two and a half out of five, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Five out of to get him to five out of nine. Um, so good chances there. And we're especially also watching Ravi Haria looking for his GM norm on seven out of nine. Oh, uh, yeah. That's uh, checkmate lot. That's quite cunning. Then we should probably go um, Bishop G2, I guess, and then uh, Bishop H3 check. And uh, and keep on, uh, yeah. I think that's that's. Oh, does that does that win as well? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> it's a, but otherwise we could chase the king back further with bishop g two h three. Okay, so wait, Jeff Patzer is going to be doing some more commentary on this um, on the next round in an hour. So please, everybody, tune in to Chess Patzer UK. Chess Patzer, if you've got a second, put the link in the chat there now, and everybody tune into there next. Um, what we are going to do in just a second is raid Mr. Dodgy Chess. Um, and in the meantime, thank you, everybody, very much for watching um, and for commenting in the chat. Um, and please do remember to tune into Chess Patsa to follow some more of the very exciting um, Wood Green Invitational Tournament. Yeah, okay, and you can see the link there. It's twitch TV slash chess chess UK. So go there in one hour, and in the yeah. meantime, we will leave you with Mr. Dodgy Chess. Dun 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 dodgy raid. Okay. Ten seconds to the raid. He's got so strong, Mr. Dodgy, we call him Dodgy Zilla. Ah to the raid okay and let's raid now
and end this stream.